Hey, I'm Nate Fossum. I'm a professional archaeologist currently excavating in northern Texas, and I specialize in the archaeology of North America prior to colonization by Europeans. This has been my primary field of study and work for over 10 years, especially in the region that we call the Eastern Woodlands. In this video, I want to talk a little about the prehistoric coppersmithing cultures of North America. These are virtually unknown except to professional archaeologists working in the Eastern Woodlands, and even then, many of the details are not often discussed. Unfortunately, because these kinds of artifacts are made of copper and metal detectors can pick up copper, a lot of the evidence for this industry has been erased by collectors and uh, private enthusiast looters. Uh, so there are only a few well-recorded sites that we can draw on to say much of anything about this culture. So here's a map of the area that the old copper culture covers and kind of its subsequent descendant cultures in the, the woodland periods. A large part of the reason that the people of the Lake Superior Basin never developed a smelting technology was that they never actually needed to. There's so much of what's called elemental copper or naturally occurring copper of a very high purity that smelting copper ore, the uh, heating of it to the temperature that it liquefies and separates the copper from the impurities, that process was never really necessary. The area around Lake Superior, including Isle Royale, has a lot of very accessible deposits of this elemental copper that could be worked into tools and ornaments using a te technique called cold forging. And this is kind of a misleading term. It's only cold relative to the temperatures required to smelt and extract copper from ore and then cast it into molds like you see in old world uh, copper and bronze smithing, uh, bronze casting technologies. So Great Lakes elemental copper is pure enough that it can just be heated up to about eight or 900 degrees Fahrenheit or something like 400 degrees Celsius and then hammered into shape, almost like you would see a blacksmith do with iron. So some of the oldest evidence that we have for copper being used is a fragment of hammered copper recovered from a fire pit around Lake Superior, and the charcoal from that pit was radiocarbon dated to about 6,800 years ago after it was calibrated. And that's some of the oldest copper forging in the world. Um, the Great Lakes coppersmithing tradition is as old as copper working in Eurasia, but this metallurgy in North America reaches its high point between about 6,000 and 3,000 years ago. The use of copper starts out as a mostly utilitarian resource that helps to fill the role occupied by stone and bone tools in other regions. And the area around Lake Superior is very poor in tool stone like uh, high quality cherts or obsidian, things like that. So rather than relying totally on quartz and other low grade tool stone materials, these people in the middle and late archaic chose to take advantage of their native copper resources. And they used it to make projectile weapons like these spears here and awls, these needle-like puncturing tools, and a wide variety of knives, most of which are somewhat curved. As time progresses towards the end of the Archaic period, most of these utilitarian objects fall out of fashion, and the copper becomes an important material for burial goods and trade to very distant places. However, in this region, the copper all persists as an artifact type when all the other utilitarian copper artifacts die out. Whatever they're doing with these awls, the copper is so effective that the people making them never fully revert back to bone as their material of choice. And I've already discussed how copper beads have been recovered from late archaic sites like the Monument of Poverty Point in Louisiana. And it was also important as a material for the middle woodland period cultures like the Hopewell and the Capena in the Hopewell are from kind of the Ohio River Valley area, and then the Kapina are a related culture in the Tennessee River Valley. And the Kapina, for instance, placed these real-shaped gorgets in their burials. The innovation of metallurgy did not upend the social order in the Americas the way it did in Europe and Asia. Drastic social stratification doesn't appear to have taken place. Its value was never so great as to warrant the use of slave labor in extensive mining operations, as is reported, for instance, in the British Isles. 
At least we don't see evidence for that, not as early as the Archaic period when copper forging becomes well-developed surrounding Lake Superior. Interestingly, where copper as a grave good is concerned, it's most often associated with the burials of women and children in the Western Great Lakes, the exact opposite of the pattern that we tend to see in Europe and Asia. So, I hope you found that interesting. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching.